Hey, universe. What's up? What's up? How you been? I know you've been good. Well, you've been warm. Or, well, you've been tempestuous, right? At least, that would be a fair word to describe this week. But that would not be a fair word to describe the launching of this season 10. Ah, oh, the quickening continues. Season 10, episode 1 of It's All My Fault. The recording project that I am compelled to, uh, what, vomit, verp? Am I verping this into the universe? That's pretty fair. <clears throat> With all the burping I do on this recorded mess of a presentation to the universe. Well, yes, I ask a lot. But I give a lot. Well, do I? I don't really give a lot. Um, I don't want to get sidetracked when I'm not even a minute into this thing. So the reason that I'm on is because as I speak... I'm over here getting the eggplant all flowery, and then it's going to go in this egg bath, and mm, 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 that's going to go, mm, yeah, I'm making eggplant parmesan, and it is 11, 11, yeah, it's 11, 11, it's 11, 11 here on the 27th, and boy, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I did not set that up, okay, I am a guy without a job. I'm a guy without a responsibility. I'm a guy without accountability to anything. And yet, I feel like I'm so far behind today already that I'm recording in the kitchen. That's what that ambient noise is. You hear my refrigerator overworking. And I'm making an eggplant. And I'm going to have to hit the pause button left-handed because now my right hand is a goopy mess. So you can see how my uh, day is pretty crowded with... Uh, the need to put you through all this unnecessary activity and rigmarole that, oh my god, this looks good. These are going to be great. Um, but as I open season 10, and this is uh, what I'm calling tensions rising, because I do believe tensions are rising. If not worldwide, they're certainly rising here in the United States. Um, and I think therapeutically, it's time that the old U.S. of A. just lay herself down on my couch here, and we had, well, I, I can't tell if we need to have um, a cuddle, a spanking, or just a good conversation. And since I really am not up for the spanking cuddles, at least not with Lady Liberty, I would like to instead use these next 53 episodes as a therapeutic session for the country, as it were. Something that is more aligned with, okay, if we can't at least admit that we're the problem, well then maybe I'll just have to start proposing solutions. And if we start enacting some solutions and it starts making the country a better country, well, you know, but... Maybe we didn't need this therapeutic conversation. Pause. Um, pause. All right, that is my first, and if I had to guess last, uh, pausing for uh, the flipping of the eggplant parmesan. I'm going to continue what I'm doing here, but get back to you when we have some quiet time in the bedroom, because isn't that why we got on together? Pause. Um, pause. Now that we've had our quiet time in the bedroom, well, I've got about seven more minutes in the oven on that eggplant parmesan. And, uh, so, well, that doesn't give us enough time to get into my Sweet 16 tournament. That does give us enough time to go through how much, uh, evolution of the, uh, dynamic between the sexes has happened in my lifetime. And since today's Sweet 16 will be eight surprisingly likable things about women versus eight surprisingly likable things about men, well, I thought one thing we could talk about is the time in my life when men and women used to like each other. And I'm not saying there isn't a whole lot of men and women liking each other today. I think there's a, some of that going around. But there's, 
And, I, and I'm not trying to, this is not an exclusionary conversation that's trying to push the other sexual uh, preferences into a category we'll call other. No, I don't try to exclude. I'm not here to ever make someone feel like they're not welcome. But when it comes to talking about uh, the male-female dynamic, well, I have my experiences to go on, and then I have a whole lot of story embellishments I could draw from that I I just don't feel is my place to, to speak to those kinds of experiences unless I've had them. So we will speak today about what is uh, the dynamic of uh, men and women when they are attracted to each other. Because uh, having switched to match game as my exercise uh, game show to make the clock move, there is a lot of sexual uh, conversation. I don't want to even say innuendo because it's, it's not, it's, it's more direct and there's ass pinching. There's, uh, there's, uh, well, there's just a level of flirt that exists in the history before the internet that's gone now. And, and I think obviously to the detriment of men, but I also think to the detriment of women and, and I, uh, I don't know. This one, this one has me struggling because how did we go from a society where 36 years ago a guy could pinch a woman on the ass and she could feel all kinds of responses toward that from somewhat offended to completely offended to ready to go knock boots? I mean, again, there's just a level of sexual integration and pot stirring that existed back in the 20th century that the internet has taken away. I really believe that. And couple that with all of the uh, regulations and administrative obligations due in the workplace today by everybody. And well, what you have is a whole lot of sterile, not fun interaction between men and women right now. Honestly, and I'm not saying that the 70s had it right, but I think I am saying the 70s had it better. Oh, um, pause. Now, I have to go get my hour on the Nordic track in before we get any further in this. And I also might be going to play pinball, and I also might be going on a date tonight. And so this could be a lot, 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 lot later that I get back to you. But we are going to do my Sweet 16 before the tournament uh gets underway again because when you get right down to it, if ever there was a time in history where we needed to be looking for the things that are surprisingly likable about each other, I, I think that point in history is here. Pause. Um, pause. I could have gone twice that long. But it should have only been half that time because you should be double timing me, right? I mean, if we start dating, you should definitely be two timing me as well. But that is not what I was implying. I'm saying get your speed on your playback player up so you don't have to go through 12 seconds of monotonous tone or more often dead space where I'm thinking of a word I can't remember. Anyhow, if you're not going 1.5, 1.75, 2.0, or 2.2, well... I try to tell you every recording now to speed me up. Nothing do I want less than to waste your time. And so that's why I'm going to again address what I just said, because I don't know that I should be bringing up ass pinching without clarifying that, yes, I think that's crossing the line. I do. What I'm saying is it hasn't always been crossing the line. And yet, now that it is, and we see it as the offensive overtone of patriarchy and expectation of sexual submission in a woman's presence in the 70s, what was true about the 70s is it was a hypersexual time. People were ready to let loose after being told, don't be so sexual for generations. So, 
as we started to explore our boundaries, we crossed a few, I agree. And the random touching of women's sexual body by a man with sexual intent is not fair. Women don't deserve that kind of uh, incursion in their physical space at all. But <clears throat> when we start boxing in all of our unexplainable carnal attractions to something that can always be explained and be shown as proper, well, the society as a whole becomes a whole lot less flirtatious. Because in the 70s, one thing I can say is those motherfuckers could flirt. Flirting in the 70s was an art. It was, it, it, it had gained enough uh, quid pro quo as women were ascending into the position of quote unquote equality they've attained today. There, the playful dynamic that existed. Okay, how do we get that back? How do we get men and women to like each other again? How do we do that? Well, I have my idea, and I'm going to go take some bargains so that we can think uh, through this without me having to... Okay, I just want to get high. Be right back, bye. Oh, uh, pause. Oh, and, 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 to all the three people who might actually have realized, wait, he said he's going to go get high, but he sounds like he might be going to get high on... Something other than that old shitty weed he's been smoking for a week and a half. <gasps> I would say, you are intuitive. Or, I just have explained more of myself than I remember. But, either way, yeah, I sold a bike. So what I do, uh, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on weed, but I spent more on weed yesterday than I should have. Well, weed concentrates. But, oh, I'm going to be high for this one. But, you know, I, I'm opening the season here. The season opener, right? Got to celebrate a little bit. We're season 10. That's all of my fingers or all of my toes. So, until season 20, when we're going to go ballistic again, well, you know, understand. Giving ourselves a little celebration over here at I am, wait, I-A-M-F. Uh, it's all my fault. I, uh, yeah. I-A-M-F podcast. <gasps> we're so... Fuck, I fucked all this up. I'm going to get high so I don't fuck the rest of it up. Bye. Um, pause. Okay, this is mostly a test to see if I can actually get the bong uh, element scorching hot without uh, it being too annoying for me to talk over. Because I just wanted to represent that I understand my ambient noise sucks. I do. I'm really going to spend season 10 making that better. And if this works... This will be the only noise you'll ever hear when I'm igniting the uh, titanium element that makes me so high I can barely think of words that I really want to think of. Um, and speaking of that, we're being sponsored today by Gary Payton, uh, Lilac Diesel, and Skunk OG. So I think this is enough of a test. I'm going to go finish all that off, and then I'll be back to talk about uh, women like I like to do. Pause. Um, pause. Okay, I was wrong. In the attempt to actually make this a real test of value... I'm going to double the intensity of my last bong hit flame to this level of intensity, talk over this, and see if my annoyance factor is in fact being triggered at this point, which I assume it is. Pause. <clears throat> All right, I'm pause. <clears throat> I don't know if I made my point about how the initiative here has always been of a uh, truly personal nature. I do feel compelled to fully confess to the universe my state of existence in this in this human meat soup journey that became <clears throat> my current run. Um, well, okay, so where's my phone? I actually have misplaced my phone, but now that someone just texted me, where the fuck's my phone? Pause. <laughs> Boy, is there a trend I don't need to see accelerate? That of me losing shit right in front of my face. I might be the single greatest looking at something that I can't find person in the universe. I don't even know how I do it. It is a true gift to be able to go try to look for something that I've lost in the house, not find it for a week, and then discover it in the most obvious place of all time. I don't know how I do this. But I do it, and I bet I do it better than you as you're thinking, yeah, I don't know how I do that either, but I do that shit. Yeah, I do that shit. Well, we all do it. We all are scatterbrained enough to not be able to keep our attention on the end of this sentence as we're starting it, but 
whatever we're talking about when we're eating goldfish and going to parties with teenagers, I mean, it's just part of the game, right? So when you have these moments of disillusionment of your own ability to perceive your environment and work within it with harmony, well, I like to, uh, you know, take a cold shower, reset, tell yourself that this was just the opportunity for you to realize that there's still work to do. We're all just works in progress. And we're all the kind of works in progress that if we can laugh at what we do that's absurd rather than hold it against ourselves, well, we still learn lessons, but we don't become our own worst enemies. And in a society trained to make us think that there's something not just wrong with the other guy, but wrong with us, it can be hard to find a balance of accepting and loving yourself in your own moments of absurd execution. But that really is the secret to life. So anyway, that's the end of the recording now. I just wanted to get to the secret of life, and it took this long to get there. So, oh, wait, I didn't do the, should we do the Sweet 16? Yeah. Oh, fuck, this is the opening of season 10? I wasn't supposed to talk about the secret of life till the end of the season. <sighs> I fucked up. Well, all right, maybe I will expand on the theory of how that works. Uh, why did I have to do that? All right, I can recover from this. I can recover from blowing the climax that was supposed to happen quite a while from now. Yeah, prematurely ejaculate me all the time. That's my thing, man. Pause. <sighs> okay, and back to reassembling the purpose of my life. No, no, no. Wait, I guess I kind of am doing that. What What's happened lately is, I think, for reasons both that I've seen coming and are a little bit, oh, that's going to happen now? Surprising. I'm, uh, I'm in communication with old friends of, uh, of a very valuable nature who are, um, going to, I believe, help move the whole uh, repair initiative for humanity's soul forward. And, and this is not like the burden is on these contacts to participate. I just believe that the universe is starting to amplify the energy of those who are natural amplifier uh, engagements when in proximity. There are certain people for whom win-win is the only way life works out. And being around these people will give you an opportunity to see that you can have um, a comrade of life for uh, certain just uh, uh, overlaps in, I suppose, soul composition. They're just people with whom you will never be able to go out of contact. And uh, as some of that energy is starting to uh, reassemble in my life, I know it's because I need it. So, uh, appreciative of all that I am and very much looking forward to what that means in, in forward development. Am I even more? So as these things become available, well, I guess that'll help me even more so explain how it's the meaning of life. Something I think is in my house, which probably means a squirrel. So hold on, pause. All right, I'm pause, I'm pause. Let's get on with it. Let's get this Likeable things about men? There are such? Surprisingly likable? Bullshit. Bullshit, I say. Men are gross. Yeah, yeah, men are gross. Kinda, in a way that's certainly uh, identifiable. But, you know, women, you're not perfect, despite all the messaging in 21st century American culture that says you are. There are certain things that women do that might get them into my camp of, well, you know, you could do better. But that's not what we're here for today. No, we're here because, yeah, there are some things about women that are even surprisingly likable. It's not just a hand over all of your likability to women because everything about them is likable. Okay, well, I kind of feel that way. But there are things that even stand out above and beyond what generally brings that whole thing of, yeah, women are great, into my life. You know why they're great? Not just because of their women, but because they do this. When I look at guys, well, they do other stuff. 
So in recognition of the fracture that it is in 21st century, I don't know about world culture, but American culture between sexes who are now in pursuit of a life that is so perfect. Every picture on your Instagram and Facebook account is the envy of the world. Well, somewhere in there, we kind of lost the giggly, giggly, funny, dunny, let's uh, go make some, some bunny, honey, part of what men and women used to have. So when I go into these uh, descriptions of how I believe there are advantages that we overlook so easily that without each other, we would certainly start to think, oh, yeah, well, they did do that. And that was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was nice. Um, well, let's start recognizing that shit right now. So if it's been a while since you walked into your, what, 15-year marriage and said to your husband, do you know how much I appreciate the fact that, well, I don't want to give it away, but now is the time to just gratuitously tell someone that you recognize their value, even for the regular shit they're doing. It will make their day because nobody else in the world is doing that for them. I tell you that. Pause. Um, pause. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that that bridge in Baltimore is a major problem. If this doesn't look like some sort of extremely intelligent attack on America's infrastructure, well, what does it look like? It doesn't look like finding a guy that's alive underwater in a boat that's capsized 60 hours ago. I know that. Pause. Unpause. And the reason I know that is because I've seen the video on YouTube where they find that guy who's been capsized under water for 60 hours. And if you have not seen that, then I already know what you should be doing instead of this. Go watch that video. Have a bigger sense of human potential. That's what you'll walk away with. How many things can give you that? <gasps> Certainly not this, possible. Um, not that we are here without solutions. We are solution-oriented. With tensions rising, I think everyone should find a way to think about something that they're taking too seriously a lot less seriously. And one thing that I take... Do I take anything seriously? Hmm. Uh, what do I take? Okay, let's not get distracted. I don't have to think about what I take seriously. I take either all of it or nothing. I'm an all or nothing guy when it comes to everything. Black or white. There's no gray in this universe, right? So, as I'm evolving into something that is, um, annoyingly predictable with the gimmicky contrivances that I lean on so I can be somewhat coasting through this career as a recording project initiator. Or, other words, this is the third year in a row that I'll have done my own Sweet 16. So I believe I'm starting what they call, in other cultures, a tradition. I may not be. A tradition may require double-digit years. But... Since I may not even have double-digit years left, I think my tradition can start in year three. So, in what will be hitherto referred to as the third annual traditional Sweet 16 mind dump of verping concepts of my choice, 2004. Wait, what year is it? 2024. Okay, 2024. In this year's competition... We've got eight surprisingly likable things about men coming out of the Southwest and the Northwest conferences. And over in the Northeast and the Southeast conferences, we have the same four women. I did get uh, the help of, let's see, Hunter, Jamie, Allison, Donna, Rachel. Uh, there's one other. Who's the other? Uh, um, oh. Kennedy. Yep, her name was Kennedy, just like the VJ on MTV. But it wasn't her. It was a different Kennedy. And technically, I guess you have to count her husband, and his name was Jackson? Jack? Something like that. 
But Kennedy and Jackson, how fucking long would those be my friends? Mm. I don't know. It depends on how funny they are. Okay. Oh, man, I got too high. Did I? Nope, I'm not high enough. Be right back. I am capable of admitting that I don't know much. I do not know much. But I do know that I am now high enough. And I do know that if you're going to participate in discussions regarding gender identities or uh, commonalities or specifics, and you don't bring gender balance into the discussion, while well, you're tilting things toward one perspective. All right, I get that. But that's why I went and solicited some uh, feedback from some of the other gendered among us, and it's something I would never actually proceed with in male form without consultation. I don't like having gotten into a framework of opinion without having see sought out the counter opinions that may exist against. I am 100% looking to debunk what I think at all times. Because for so many thoughts in life that I considered flagpoles planted for generations to come... I was wrong. And the one place where I have always been able to secure knowledge of value is in speaking with, communicating with, and exchanging the ideas, concepts, and realities of life in this human meat suit with other people having human meat suit life experiences. The calm, the calm, the calm? No, this is not a Star Trek episode. The communication the art of exploring one's reality with another experiencing a reality of their own. I, I don't have more important exchanges to experience. I will dedicate myself to the discovery of that which is everyone else. That would make me well, would I have to play golf? I might have to play some golf in that reality. But if I could just have a table with a line of individuals who were ready for a conversation of eclectic and yet stimulating nature, somewhere between, say, 25 minutes and 25 weeks, if that line never ended, I could sit in that chair well, I might have to get up and pee, but I could sit in that chair until I had to get up and pee, and then I'd get right back in that chair and do it all over again. So the idea that I would presume the mindset of anything, even my own, well, that presumption I can make. But no other presumption would I make, nor want to. The opportunities to go out and discover that which is another human being's take on things. It's literally the point of my life. So when I go through these kinds of exercises without doing some level of cross-examination to ensure I'm being both sensitive and on point, well, I wouldn't live that way. <clears throat> I'm not saying you shouldn't. Maybe you should. I don't know if you should, but should you? Well, if you are a man and you are playing man-man in the year that we will call the year after love is left on the cutting room floor, well then <clears throat> you might have been experiencing some of these. Um, let's see, what would these be? These would be your predispositions or your, your general expectations. The things that we think, well, <laughs> shouldn't a man do that? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. A man probably should do that. Well, let's just, we'll list out the seeds. Well, the, oh, actually, because this is the 10th season of It's All My Fault, I felt obligated to somehow force into this 8x8 grid of Sweet 16 purity. Well, I had to bring it to 10x10, 10 10, right? I mean, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You wouldn't? Yeah, you would. 
Oh, you wouldn't know how to do it? Well, you'd do it like this. <clears throat> you'd have two playing games. So, coming out of the men's side, I have the number seven seed playing in to get actually into the tournament as the official number seven seed, much like the University of Colorado Buffaloes did against the Boise State Broncos. And then, in the eighth seed, I have them playing in as well, which would be much like the Colorado State Rams playing in against the Virginia Cavaliers. So those games are also mirrored in the women's bracket where, obviously, the seven and eight seeds are both playing games. So let's start with the men's eighth seed. That is the one nice, likable, surprising thing about men is that they do not need help, ever. They never ask for it. They just don't need it. They do not need help, ever. They don't need help. So why is this a surprisingly likable thing about men? Glad you asked. Uh, because you don't have to help them. Ever. Don't offer it. Don't even suggest it. Don't, don't tiptoe around it. Just, just ignore them. Because they don't need help. They'll never ask for it. So it's not your burden. Okay, okay, okay. I can't even take this seriously, right? I mean, okay. You could live that way, but then you'd just basically be ignoring men all the time for the rest of your fucking life. Because they're always in a position of needing help but not knowing it. Right? So, and and when this is taken to an extreme and they are just literally pounding what uh, the uh, Pentagon-sized pieces into the triangle-sized holes. Does that work? No. No. Um, anyway, they might get lucky, and maybe their piece fits in the right slot, and they get a little praise for having done something well, but for the most part, well, you can see why it's an eight seed. Men do not need help, ever. Okay. We are clear. So, what they had to play in to get into the tournament, though, and so I guess I'm, I'm already uh, giving up the Vegas uh, outcome here. Well, men wear classic shit well. And by this I mean, there can be a guy wearing his high school baseball uniform in his 50s and still look good in it. There can be a guy who can slip into that tux he wore to his wedding and still look good in it. There can be a guy who has that baseball hat from college and it's still, he wears it and it's fine. Or that hoodie from fucking high school. That's not something I see a whole lot of women pulling off. You don't see women out in their prom dresses all that often. At least not in their 50s. But I'm not saying women can't pull that off, but it's the kind of thing that men generally can pull off. Some of us. And because this wasn't really a year for wearing classics, it's more a year for wearing cheap shit from China that's going to fucking disintegrate in seven months, even if you treat it with the utmost of care. It's more that year. So you can see why the old men never need help, just don't bother, they don't need help, moved on into the tournament as the official number eight seed on the men's side bracket. Now on the women's side bracket, <clears throat> we have... The, um, where did I put the eight seed? Oh, we have, all right, play-in candidate against play-in candidate. Our top play-in candidate, women have great memories. Do women forget anything? Do they ever forget anything? Women's memories are unbelievable. Sometimes it's hard to believe how good their memories are. I'm, I'm just speaking as a dude. I'm sure among women, there's probably even levels of just very delicate nuance that separates those of you with the truly gifted memories from those of you with the only exceptionally amazing memories. But women have great memories. Women have terrific recall for almost everything. Almost everything. There are exceptions, but we'll get into that some other day. We're not going to talk about those today. But when your great memory comes up against this year's buzzsaw that 
You know what women also are? They're terrific at participating in focus groups. Yeah, they are. You want a couple guys in there, otherwise it looks like, what the fuck were we doing? But the guys aren't going to give you anything nearly as valuable as what the women will give you. And if you slant that, like, say your focus group's 11 people and you go eight dudes, three women, you'll still get more out of those three women than the eight dudes. And if you have seven women and four dudes in that group, you'll get five times what you get. So, of course, you're going to bring in more women in every single focus group because they're better at it. They're great at it, actually. So, that doesn't have anything to do with their great memories either. They'll remember those focus group results and their comments and exactly what was said in that room and who replied to their comments and how they replied back to that comment. They'll remember that shit forever. But the focus group participation itself, that has nothing to do with the fact that they have great memories. That's not why men suck at focus groups either. They just suck at a lot of stuff. But they <clears throat> squeaked by with a victory, did those great memory women. And I got to say, I was pulling for the uh, focus group, but coming down the stretch, and here it comes, obvious joke, here's in your head. Coming down the stretch, they lost their focus. So... Lose your focus against a team with a great memory. And you know what? You're giving up an edge. Enough of an edge that great memories. That is the number eight seed in our women's division of Sweet 16, 2024. All right. <sighs> this is already getting long. So on to the seventh playing game. And we'll just stick with the women because the seventh playing game had uh, you... Ladies, you feminine kind, you you girls and women and grandmas, all of you are so much less likely. In fact, the percentages are almost to the nil. If we're going with probability that an actuarial table would show, it would be zero. So you are actuarially table zero quantified officially unlikely to be the insider of a mass genocide or a mass shooting. So that is a surprisingly likable thing about you. <clears throat> now that not being a big year for, uh, well, yeah, this is kind of a big year for mass suicide or mass suicide. That's not what I meant. Cause it's genocide. It's genocide. What's happening over there. But that mass genocide shit. And I guess if we're going to say it, the mass shooting shit this year, it's all been men. So, again, once once you look around, you say, that's a likable thing about women. They are just not going to get you involved in a mass shooting. That's not their thing. However, when you go with that against how great you are at winking, oh, what did you think was going to win? I mean, how many mass shootings really happen? Not many. How many genocides really happen? Well, that one. But, okay, maybe I'm not being serious enough about the travesties that happen in this world. But just because men are the ones pulling off the travesties doesn't mean that our inaction to stand up and make the right thing happen isn't being noticed. But you know who will stand up and make the right thing happen eventually? I guarantee it'll be a woman. So to that woman who yet to rear her head will lead us into a better place because she will demand of us that we be better. I already say to you, thank you, ma'am. But I also wink at you and say, yeah, I know my wink's not as good as yours. You're a woman, though. It's not fair. Women are great at winking is officially the number seven seed. And that is a surprisingly likable thing about women. So in the men's seven seed playing game, we have they are good at playing dumb. <laughs> yeah, they are. And you want to talk about a year where that one came up a lot? Well, actually, isn't that every year? We are we are so good at being like, wait, what? What'd you say? Huh? Huh? I I didn't hear you. What? Hold on. Hold on. I'm doing something. I'll, I'll be right there. Whatever it is. Just playing dumb. Dumb. Duh. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, and I don't... I don't see women pulling that card very often. They'll play it once in a while, especially if they're just caught in some serious shit. But when do women get caught in serious shit, right? 
should I, I will, I will write Nancy Pelosi and ask her. But other than when you're caught in some like, uh, shit, I just, I don't, that's a guy thing. What? Huh? So we're good at playing dumb. And that goes up against a, an absolute classic. Well, at least the classic since, say, in the 1940s. And that is, the dudes are the ones parking the car. And frankly, I, I will grant that this is just something that women are like, fine, you want to park the car? We're going to give that one to you. It's not like we couldn't take that and do it. We'd probably find better parking given some of the jobs you do out there. Although once in a while we will say that the men will find some golden parking. But this isn't something women couldn't rise up and embrace and take on as their own. But it's something that, for whatever reason, it seems like men did. They got really fucking groovy with their par car parking abilities. I don't know about the new guys driving Teslas that park themselves while they're getting blowjobs, but I think the men who were driving more like Lincoln Continentals that didn't park themselves while they were getting blowjobs, they know how to park a car. So, <clears throat> you can honestly see why this wasn't even a game. I mean, parking the car blew good at being dumb out of the building, as it should have. One thing about playing dumb is you don't win a lot. You don't lose a lot. You just don't win a lot. You're just kind of dumb. Like this whole sequence. So, glad to see play, playing it dumb get out of there, because I don't like when men play dumb. I don't think it's reasonable. It's just a dumb way of acting like we're beneath our own intellectual stupidity. And as I get dumber with the things I'm saying, I'm going to stop proving my own uh, Dunning-Kruger syndrome and move on to the seventh seed. No, I would do the... Now, let's do seven. So seven, parking the car, is playing two, and the number two seed for the men is an oldie but a goodie. And that is, when the shit's hitting the fan, it's women and children to safety first. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is a cliche, and anymore, there'd probably be like six or seven uh, really um, severe dressed women saying, fuck you, buddy, you go, you get in that boat, you get in that boat. I'm not a woman, I'm a human. And humanity says it's all of us, or it's none of us. So you go first. And I appreciate your effort there, I really do. But if you are, in fact, not... Uh, slinging a rice and beans or franks and beans. What do we call that thing down there? If you don't have 21 digits when you count them all, you only have 20, well, you inherently have more value. You just do. I don't care who you are. You have the ability to Xerox another one of us into existence. Guys, we don't. We don't have that. And obviously, children are our future. Let them sing with Whitney Houston until their realities are shattered by the mainstream media. Until then, though, they're our future. They're the optimistic hope of humanity. So, obviously, they're more valuable than men. And so are vaginas. So, all vaginas and all children go first. This isn't even something men argue. We realize if the fire is happening, you guys slide down the chute first. And we burn to death. But we're cool with that. We're totally cool with that. And that's a surprisingly likable thing about guys. Well, <clears throat> you can imagine that when all you've done is park the car and you ended up having to pay the valet, well, that's just not that impressive. But when you're standing on the Titanic playing music, well, that's a little better. So in what could only be described as a game that went exactly as you'd expect, on to the next round goes women and children first. So on the women's side in the seventh slot, we had you are great at winking. And that goes up against a buzzsaw, a pre-tournament favorite for sure, that many saw as, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, talk about the game you don't want to play. And that's going up against they get shit done, the number two seed. Yeah, women get shit done. They say they're going to do something, it gets done. They say they're going to win this tournament. Watch out. Well, 
You can wink and be coy and have all the flirtatious behavior you want when you're up against somebody trying to get some shit done. But you know what that does? Makes them think you're a dumbass who's getting in their way. Just like the dumbasses that were winking all over the court did not get in the way of getting shit done. Getting shit done moves on in what can only be described as a national humiliation for great at winking. Not that I want you to stop winking, women. Keep it up. Keep it up. Just don't expect to wink through an episode of really trying to get shit done. We know you won't. You're smart. You're women. All right. So in the number eight slot where Great Memories had that unexpected but expected win over terrific at participating in focus groups. Well, <clears throat> you'd think that kind of um, recall would be the sort of momentum that might give them a chance against the number one seed on the women's side this year is that ESPA shit you guys have with your kids. And men do not have this. Women, those who actually nine months commit to cultivating that seed all the way to screaming baby. Well, whatever happens in those nine months, something connects that never disconnects. As far away as your children may be, there is an ESP connection all women have with the offspring they birthed. As a man, I can say that is maybe the greatest jealousy of your gender I hold. But Hold it against you, I can't. I just hold it in reverence that it exists and that you're capable of it. So that, obviously, can't lose to your great memories. That part's not even all that great if you're a guy. So I'd say, Phew! way to be super moms. It's impressive. Now, is it as impressive as the eighth seed? The men do not need to be told they need help because they never need help. Going up against the number one most likable, surprisingly most likable thing about guys, and they pick up the heavy shit. Now, there may be an exception or two in the universe. We're not perfect on this ledger, but we're 99.9. .9. If there are seven people randomly helping move office furniture, and four of them are women and three of them are men, do you know who will move all the file cabinets and desks? The men. We just do. We lift the heavy shit. This is kind of all we've got left, so it's not like we don't understand. This is something we better be keeping up with. Why do you think it's the number one seed? And, of course, if you think a helpless man-child over there unwilling to try to read the instructions on his Ikea dresser he's assembling is going to take down the guy carrying the fucking dresser into the goddamn house, well, you, you think wrong. Lifting heavy shit moved through, as expected, with ease over that guy still wondering why he didn't ask for help. Well, you didn't need it, right? So, fuck you. All right. That leaves us with our inside games. We'll start with the men. On the same side of the bracket as the 1-8 seed were the 4-5 seed. And in the 5th seed, this is surprisingly likable. Even for me. Men are... Decent to better than decent, often at cutting their own hair. Now, women, no, no. I mean, seriously, I don't even think you could find a woman who would want to cut her own hair. But dudes, yeah, fuck yeah. Mostly because we only have, like, two haircuts that are legit. But beyond that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Save you a little money at Supercuts, right? And when... Cutting our own hair has had the kind of year it's had, given the crisis in dollars and not having any. Well, this is a strong year. They're coming into the tournament looking good. At least got a lot of support. Which made them a very, very big upset candidate against the other thing that I like about guys that you can depend on is we'll change the fucking tire. And this extends even to the most effeminate, version of a male homosexual man you can imagine. If he's in a car with 15 Olympian uh, heavy weightlifting women from Bulgaria and the tire blows, he's going to offer to get out and fucking fix it first and demand 
that those women stop manhandling him and taking over the job that he would be almost as good at as they are if they would just let him have a chance. Even in that circumstance, he'll be begging to do the work. But that's the only circumstance in which I can see women taking the job over because in any other circumstance when the guy's like, fuck, I'll go out, pop the, pop the trunk so I can get the jack, no woman says, hang on, buddy, I got this. They say, okay, thank you. We'll be inside, staying dry, and we're cool with that. We change the tires. We get it. So when an obligation like changing tires comes up against a fashion statement like cutting our own hair, well, uh, let's face it. The one that is going to always show the more return in life is how much tire changing we will continue to do regardless if it's an electric vehicle, a gas vehicle, or an Anunnaki, well, they don't have tires. Okay, so if the Anunnaki UFO thing starts to happen, well, don't think we're going to miss changing the tires. We realize that job sucks. But it doesn't suck enough to lose to cutting our own hair. Boom! That makes tire changing and lifting heavy shit our first final game to get to the final game that gets to the final champion. So, the other men's game, and now we're just going to go through them because I'm getting tired of doing this, just like you're getting tired of listening to it. That would be our number six seed and our number three seed. Well, our number six seed in the men's bracket is men know what they know. And when they know what they know, they don't need to know more. What I mean by this is that men are cool finding something that they like and sticking to it without ever having to explore if there's something that they would like more. And women, I think, are always considering, you know, I think there could be more than this. I just don't know that they have the same level of entrenched comfort to, uh, like a, like a, like that old hoodie sweatshirt from high school he's still wearing. There's just something about guys when they're satisfied, they're satisfied. They don't need to be overly satisfied or go looking for satisfaction beyond satisfaction. I'm satisfied. Why do you keep making me look at that other Mexican restaurant? I like this one. And that fell into the slot of playing what is obviously our maybe most likable feature. We can get ready in minutes, seconds even. And I'm talking complete change of activity. Instead of uh, gardening, we're going to go play tennis. No problem. I'm ready. Let's go. I mean, seriously, if I'm a guy, I'm going to be able to go from gardening to tennis immediately. I'm probably already ahead of you. I've probably already got the bags packed because I'm thinking, what can I do to get her to think maybe we should go play tennis instead of gardening? But when you finally say, should we go play tennis? And I'm already in the fucking tennis gear ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's because I'm a guy. I know I'll be waiting on you for 20 minutes to get ready, but I am ready. So obviously. There's no way I'm going to let that thing about us thinking we know shit and that we don't need to explore shit because we know shit. It's kind of a bug and a feature at the same time. Whereas being able to get ready in minutes, seconds even, no, that's a feature. A feature going through to the final round, which will play women and children first because obviously that's more important than parking the car. Okay, now on the women's side, we have moved through the number eight and the number one. So that ESP shit with your kids, we're jealous of that and we should be. And number two, getting shit done, beat great at winking, which I guess it should, but I don't want to discourage your winking. Just like in the three, six slot, we had our number six. I like women's penmanship. You just have flair, true flair. There is a way that women develop artistic penmanship flourishes that do not happen in the men's gender. We have sloppy handwriting. We have very precise handwriting. We have uh, architectural handwriting. We have some uh, writing of at least worth. But women's, it's personal. It's an identity. It's yours. It's like a fingerprint. And... The variety of penmanships among women is a surprisingly likable feature of women. But when it goes up against the number three seed, which, honestly, why don't men have this? I don't know, but we don't. Women, 
can kiss it and make it better. And listen, I mean, I don't want this to be that kind of thing where you think I'm talking about kissing that and making that better. Because it's just whatever women's gift to bring forth the ability to believe in oneself in the magic of a kiss that can make it better. Men don't have that. I mean, I've never even been told to kiss it and make it better. I've been told to kiss it and make it shake and rock like a ecstatic membrane trembling entity that it is. Or at least I've been told in my head that that's what I'm trying to do down here. But I've never been told to kiss it and make it better. And I bet every single woman listening at some point has kissed something and made it better. So when kissing it and making it better is going to face the variety of penmanships that make you also cute, dainty, and sexy as hell. Now nope, kiss it and make it better goes through without even a challenge. I mean, keep up with the penmanship stuff. That's fun. But if you weren't in the world kissing and making things better, well, that might be the only thing in the world that is making things better. So that sets up a final game against getting shit done, which leaves our last entry-level first-round combat of female unsurprisingly likely things that you might not be thinking about. Well, our number five seed is you have an uncanny ability to see what others' lives are lacking and how that improvement might be engaged so that you can have a better life. Or, or you could put that as women like to see things about your life that could improve and tell you how to improve it. Men? Not so much. No, not really. But women? Yeah, they have the skill. They do. So when that came into the tournament and found itself facing so many of the women's favorite thing about themselves, uh, I didn't really think it was going to win either. Because if you're going up against women's ability to wear a wide variety of fashions and styles in their own unique take and to do it well, well... As a guy, I can say that's probably my favorite, too. How all women can create and in some way cultivate their own sense of style to become something uniquely fashionable in the world at large. I don't know how how much time do you dedicate to that? Y'all do it well. It's amazing. I mean, guys look good in either a suit or a different suit or maybe one other outfit. That's it. But women? <laughs> I mean, shit. You can give them the remnants of some sort of uh, army surplus closet, and they'll come out looking like goddamn bangbusters. Women are amazing when it comes to that. So that moving through over your ability to tell other people what they could do to improve their lives, well, I'm glad that moved through. Fashionable, yes. Men, not so much. All right, time for a break. Um, pause. All right, we're, we're blowing through this in, let's see, that says 33.03, so we're going to blow through this in less than six minutes. Um, the next round, now that we know what all these are, the ability to kiss and make it better goes against getting shit done. Well, getting shit done, please, especially in the 21st century. Women getting shit done cannot lose to your ability to kiss it and make it better. Not yet, maybe in the second half of the century, but for now, no. I, the fix could even be in. I don't even care. Getting shit done had to move through. Now, don't ever stop kissing it. Don't ever stop kissing it. But when you take that ESP shit, that sort of connection that can have you connecting across the galaxy with your offspring, and you put that against the variety of fashions, the styles, the things that make you uniquely individual... Well, you can see how this was the first real upset of the tournament. Because that sense of fashion, that sense of always being able to define your style through your own expression of your own creativity, I don't know, that's kind of women at their best. Now, the fact that nature gave you that ESP shit, we're, we're never going to feel that's fair. We want that too. Lucky women. But what you have to go through, all that childbirth stuff to get it, that's not so lucky. So we're not going to necessarily 
go demand of God that we become able to give childbirth so that we can have that. No. But the fact that you get that after all that work that birthing a child is, well, it might be enough reward. But that doesn't mean you're going to look good doing it, right? Giving birth is sloppy and gross. Oh, nobody wants to see that. So that's why, again, women's fashion, that innate sense of style, moved on to the final game. Well, the final game on the women's side. On the men's side, that means our ability to get ready in seconds, minutes, whatever. We're fast to get a ready ears. Well, when you stack that up against women and children first, oh, it's women and children first. Women and children first is critical. The species depends on it. I don't care how fast we can get ready to get off the boat. We need to wait our turn, and that's after every single woman and child has gone before us. So, wait we will. Wait we will. But when you're lifting heavy shit, well, you're also changing tires, I suppose. How can something that encompasses the other activity not win? Of course it does. It's smothered tire changing. Tire changing? I'm over here holding the fucking car up because we didn't have a jack. Fuck you. Change the damn tire. Yeah, lifting heavy shit counts. Lifting heavy shit is our last great asset in the universe. We'll keep changing the tires, but we know that's just part of our obligation to lift the heavy shit. So, lifting heavy shit is going to go up against women and children first, while they actually get shit done goes up against, and they always look good doing it. So, <clears throat> We're going to take a break. This time we're going to talk to a sponsor, and then we'll be right back. Pause. On um, pause. Okay. Today's sponsor is what we like to call the handwritten thank you note. Hello. I am the handwritten thank you note. And why am I here to talk to you today? Because I don't want anyone to think that I've lost the value I've always had. I know none of you use me anymore, because... What's a handwritten thank you note when you can send through an emoji that is actually an applause? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not as cool or as slick as a Camaro from 1968 with the, with the uh, top down. Speaking of tops down... Oh, nope, nope, this is a family show. So, why would you send someone a thank you note when you can just overwhelm them in their text box with another string of emojis? Well, hopefully, you already know the answer to that question, because the single greatest gift you can ever give anyone is a piece of your real self. So, all synthetic congratulations and applause delivered mean nothing compared to one simple, thanks mom, love, Mary, written in your own handwriting, put in an envelope, stamped, addressed, return addressed, sealed with a kiss, and dropped in a box. That amount of effort isn't much, and the rewards it feeds forward are forever. The heart emoji? Eh. I've already forgotten. Now back to our original show. Bum, 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 bum. Are you ready for some uh, makeup sports action about women and men's likable traits against gender? Because we are. Okay. We are working on the theme song for next year. Obviously, if this is going to be a tradition, we're going to need our own white country star to come over here and give us some sort of kickoff, sweet ass, we're going to commercial break now song. But until then, I apologize for my own effort to do this spontaneously. I said I'd have this thing over in six minutes. It's going to be six minutes here in three seconds. So you know what we need? We need to know who won the fucking game. You have the women lifting heavy shit against women and children first? Well, what do you think got through? Women and children first means there's a serious situation where shit's on the line. And in that capacity, whatever chaos is going to ensue, it's going to ensue and it's going to be fucking hard. So even though we may let women and children go first, this isn't a good thing. We're in the middle of a catastrophe. So 
Once a catastrophe or a potential catastrophic element of existence is in play, well, there's no fucking way I'm going to let that lose to the one thing we're still good at. No, lifting heavy shit gets to the final game. Lifting heavy shit will be the thing I will always say, uh, do you need help with that? To any woman I ever see carrying anything. I don't care if you're carrying a goddamn cantaloupe. You want me to take that in for you? No, mom? Are you sure you got it? Oh, do you think I made you drop that just by bringing it up? Now I feel bad, but I'll go get the broom and clean up your cantaloupe mess. Right, mom? Okay. So lifting heavy shit. And if I was a woman and I was watching the side of me that is fashionable playing the side of me that is getting shit done, I would be torn. If only one of these could be my expression of myself going forward, it would be hard. These are the two things that most define women in the 21st century. They are getting shit done and they are looking good doing it. So as this is happening, the thing that men look over and say, well, yeah, you look good, but if you're not doing shit, nobody's getting shit done around here. Seriously. Have you seen what men are up to lately? Not much. So go women, go. And go they did. They got that shit done all the way to the final game. Yeah. So we have the number one seed. They get shit done. Oh, the number two seed. I'm sorry. It was the number two seed gets shit done because... That upset of fashionable ladies and taking down the ESP with their kids. Well, the number two seed, getting shit done, faces the number one seed on the male side where they're lifting the heavy shit. Now, if you think I'm about to give this win to women, then you think well. Because in the 21st century, I can see as a man that women have given the better effort in terms of trying to move us into a higher state of enlightenment and that the men are falling behind. I brought this up many times. I have gone so far as to quit my job and immerse myself in the younger men culture to try to figure out what the fuck went wrong. And since I said this will be not about tensions rising, but about addressing the rising tensions with solutions potentially available to enact now to create a better world. This is something, as men, we should be thinking about nonstop. We owe the universe our efforts at rethinking how it is that we have gotten ourselves here and now have to force our ways into places that we've not had the courage to go to, at least in my lifetime. Admitting that we need to reset our sense of masculinity in the face of an overachieving feminine push that's at least intimidating, if not outright disappointing in your own sense of what you're not doing. Well, that's not how we're going to live this year. Well, maybe this year, but start thinking of ways that you too are surprisingly likable. I bet you have three or four you're not even aware of. But of the ones you're aware, start emphasizing those things around you that you're good at, that people like you for, and start making sure other people know the things that you see that they're good at, that you like them for. Let's be a complimentary nation here in the year that might be 2024. Let's start looking for that which is bringing us surprising support instead of letting us down in that same old way you've always let me down. If you expect a guy to kiss it and make it better, you expect too much. Hell, if you expect a guy to kiss it and make it tremble for 14 seconds, you expect too much of most of us. I mean, there are some of us that can do that on command. But then there's got to be some trust and you have to be willing to let it happen. And there's a level of communication. But kissing it and make it better? Well, that's what we need the women around here doing. So whatever of these silly attributes you think you're good at? Well, it's not silly. What we're good at, we're good at. And that's our gift. So if you're exceptional at winking, well, I just winked at you. So wink back. 
Be good at what you're good at. Embrace the thing that makes you like yourself. And then make sure that the people around you who are doing things that you like are aware of that. That's my first and only idea for today about how to make the world better. Just be a nicer person to yourself and the people around you. We'll start with that simple idea, and then tomorrow we'll talk about, um, hmm, what will we talk about tomorrow? <gasps> I already know. I'm not going to tell you, but it's March 29th. There's your hint.